This is the third in a series of lectures for uh, MS 2013 and MS 3014 Algebra at University College Cork. In this lecture we'll talk about modular arithmetic. So we're going to study modular arithmetic. Arithmetic. Which is the study of the arithmetic of remainders. Let's think about what happens if we divide by sevens. Divide out all the sevens from numbers, integer numbers, uh, we'll end up with, with remainders. And the remainders, the way we've defined it, the remainders have to be between 0 and 7. They can't be equal to 7. So these are the possible remainders of mod 7, or up to 7s. So for example, 65 is uh, 9 times 7 plus 2, and so a remainder of 2. We say that two numbers are congruent modulo 7 or mod 7 um, if uh, they have the same remainder. Mod 7, when we mod out all the 7s, in other words, when we uh, divide out all the 7s. So, for example, we could write this as telling us that. 65 is congruent to 2 mod 7. In other words, it's 65 and 2 have the same remainder of mod 7. They both have remainder 2. And this notation's a bit long. Um, it's quite standard, but it's a bit long. So I'll make a shorter notation, a sloppy notation, um, which is simply that uh, I'll write uh, if we remember that it's always working mod 7, we could carry out computations. Once we write that we're working mod 7, we can carry out our computations, and we just put a little bar on top to remember that it's a remainder of mod 7. And so we can just write 65 bar is 2 bar, the remainder, when we're working mod 7, of 65 and 2 is the same. In order for this notation to work, we have to make sure that we explain what we're working modulo when, before we start any computation. But it is, of course, dangerous if there turn out to be different numbers we're working modulo. There's a possibility of confusion because the bar notation doesn't include anywhere where the wh which number we're working modulo. So we have to in indicate that at the top. We can then work with these little bars on top. But if we decide to change from sevens to something else, there's a danger we might get confused about what the bar is representing. Uh, the spectacular discovery that was made by, I think probably by Gauss, is the following simple fact that when we um, when we uh, carry out uh, mod, uh, arithmetic mod 7, uh, the remainders behave in a very nice way. Let's just start thinking about this in simple examples. First of all, um, 65 plus 7 um, is, of course, 65 in this notation. Once I've said that I'm working mod 7s, so you can cut out the 7s. So if you throw in a 7, it doesn't do anything. Um, and also, of course, that's the same as 65 minus 7. If you add or subtract 7s as many times as you like, they just disappear when you're working mod 7. That's what the bar is supposed to represent. But what happens when you do things like adding, subtracting, or multiplying? If we were to, um, to add, uh, we'd find the following surprising fact. Well, to write it as a theorem. Um, so we take any positive, um, positive integer, m, uh, and then we'll work mod m's. Um, and so if um, uh, a, b, uh, a, b are integers, and if uh, a is congruent to a mod m's, and b is congruent to b mod m's, then um, the surprising fact is that a plus b is congruent to a plus b mod m's, and uh, a minus b is also congruent to a minus b mod m's. And also, a times b is congruent to a times b, more sophisticated fact, um, mod m's. So why is that true? Um, let's see. First of all, it maybe we should write it in the sloppy notation. Um, it, it looks even nicer. It just says a plus b remainder is a plus b remainder, a minus b remainder is a minus b remainder, and a b remainder is a b remainder. Um, so it gives us a, a, a nicer notation. We don't have to write all these mod m, mod m, mod m everywhere. 
So let's see how we prove this result. First is simple, before we do that, let's try a simple example to see if we believe that this is really working. 9 is the same as 2 up to 7s, um, and 4 is the same as 11 up to 7s. And so what we're claiming is that 9 times 4 should be the same as 2 times 11 up to 7s. Let's see if we believe it's true. Um, well, 9 4s are 36, and what we're asking, I'm trying to make sure that I keep my question mark here so that I remember that we're asking this, we're not stating that it's true, we're checking um, this example. And then this side is 22, 2 11s are 22, 9 4s are 36. We want to know if those are equal up to 7s. So to check, what we'll do is we'll take out all the 7s. Um, 36 is, 35 is divisible by 7, so 5 7s plus 1. And we want to know if that's the same as 22 which is 3 sevens plus 1. Uh, is that the same up to sevens? And of course that means we take off the sevens, and so what we're finding is that 1 is in fact the same as 1 up to sevens. Both of them have remainder 1. So there's an example of it working. Um, 9 is the same as 2, 4 is the same as 11, so 9 times 4 should be the same as 2 times 11. And it works out. It's not obvious why it works out, but it does work out in this example. Let's see why it's true give a proof of the result. Um, so we've said we're, in our notation we're going to take our numbers to be called little a and big A and so on. So A uh, is supposed to be the same as A up to M's mod M. And uh, so here's our proof. A is the same as A. That means that A minus A is 0 mod M's. In other words, uh, A minus A is divisible. Divisible by M or in other words, it's a multiple of m. And b minus b, by the same reasoning, is also a multiple of m. And that means that if we were to add the little uh, letters uh, and see if what the difference is from adding the little, the big letters, the difference between adding little letters and big letters uh, should be, um, well, we could just rearrange where the minus signs are. It's the difference in the a's plus the difference in the b's. And this one is a multiple of m, and this one's a multiple of m, so this one's a multiple of m. And so we've, these agree have the same remainder up to m's. Uh, the same sort of argument works for uh, computing with a times b minus a times b. We want to show that that's a multiple of m. In other words, these have the same remainder up to m's. So that has to be a multiple of m. That's what we're checking. And we can just simply rewrite that as a minus a times little b, uh, the difference in the a's, little b, uh, capital A times the difference in the b's. If you check, expand that out, you get this. So uh, so that sh works because this is a multiple of m, this is a multiple of m, and so each of these has a multiple of m in it, and so that must have a multiple of m in it. And that's the proof. So the proof's very, very elementary, but the result's not obvious. So it's this abstract idea that leads us to an abstract notion of adding remainders. We define an addition operation on remainders. So we have an arithmetic of remainders. Uh, simply uh, defined by saying that we define um, uh, adding of remainders um, means uh, we first add as usual integers and then take remainder. Modulo, whatever we're working modulo. Um, and the same for uh, subtracting and for uh, multiplying that you just do the arithmetic, arithmetic operation and then you take remainder. So it's easy to do. It's harder to say than it is to do. If I take the remainder, um, let's say, up to, let's work mod 7s. Again, I have to be a bit careful. I have to indicate what I'm working modulo. So mod 7, uh, remainder, the remainder 3 and the remainder 5, when added, should give the remainder of 3 plus 5. And that's, um, of course, the remainder of 8. But we're working modulo 7s, so that's 7 plus 1. So we can cross out the 7s, and so that's 1. So the little bars are, are, are helpful notation. We don't have to write mod, 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 mod all the time. Um, and then uh, that's how we would add. And for example, how would we multiply? Um, again, mod, uh, let's do something mod, uh, what do we do, mod uh, 13. Uh, so we're working mod 13. We have to indicate that before we can use our sloppy notation. And then 7 
plus 9, remainder 7, remainder 9, added together, by definition, will be uh, adding the um, 7 and 9 and taking remainder. And similarly, the remainder 11 plus the remainder 6. Um, if we want to add these and then multiply, the definition is that we first do the adding. So that's 7 plus 9 remainder and 11 plus 6 remainder. And then we'll multiply. Um, 7 plus 9 is 16. We'll take the remainder. 11 plus 6 is 17. We'll take the remainder. And we're working here modulo 13. So, uh, so we can take away the 13s, leaving a 3. And here we can take away the 13s, leaving a 4. And then that leaves us uh, with uh, the when you remain, take the remainder 3 and the remainder 4, you multiply them by multiplying the numbers 3 times 4 and then taking the remainder. Um, but the number 3 times 4 is 12, and that is the answer. That's the remainder because it's got rid of all the 13s already. Okay, so that's how we can add remainders and how we can multiply remainders. So well, here we've added and as well multiplied. So we can see how to do arithmetic with remainders. And this works because our theorem tells us that there's no problem if you if you add or um, if you're working on sevens, you can add or subtract sevens to something, and the remainders will work out uh, when you add the add remainders and then take remainder. You'll just get the same answer if you added any multiples of seven to any of them uh, through the anywhere through the process. So it's well-defined operation on remainders, and we were able to do addition, subtraction, and multiplication. Note that we cannot do division. That's really uh, that's going to be very important for us. Division doesn't work. This uh, this theorem you can check in simple examples that division doesn't work when you try and work it with remainders. It's not that simple. At this point, we become more comfortable, hopefully, with the with the operations we're carrying out, and we allow ourselves a very sloppy notation. So, um, so I want to consider what I'll call a very sloppy notation. Um, uh, we'll just drop even the bars uh, as well. Uh, so when I say that I'm working modulo something, um, I'll just say, uh, it turns out that this seems to be never confusing to anybody, in my experience. Um, a lot of textbooks will write mod, 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 mod all the way through, but if I just say I'm working mod 17, then I can say uh, room 16 times 29 minus 7 times 5 is what? But I remember that I'm always working mod 17, so I've written that at the top, and that means all the operations are really on remainders. So this doesn't mean the integer 29, it actually means the remainder when you mod it all the 17s, a remainder of whatever you get from 29. So we can write it as 16 times, and 29 is uh, 17 plus 12. We're working mod 17, so that's why I'm pulling out a 17 here. Minus. Now I can do the 7 times 5 directly and get 35. And then I've got 16 times, well, I can cross out the 17s. 16 times 12 minus, and 35 is, um, is two 17s plus 1. And I can cross out the 17s because we're working mod 17. So all the arithmetic operations, addition, subtraction, multiplication, they all work fine. And you can cross out 17s at any stage along the way. And so we get um, equals 16 times 12 is 192. And then minus, this is 1. Um, and then 192 is um, 11 17s plus 5 minus 1. We can cross out all those 17s, and we get 5 minus 1 is 4. So, simple example of calculating, and uh, it's a very sloppy notation because I'm really saying at the top that I'm doing everything mod 17. Uh, it looks as if I'm working with ordinary integers, but every now and again, suddenly a 17 just disappears in the middle of the calculation, and that's why I have to say at the top that I'm working mod 17. Usually, uh, I find this is not confusing, so we don't really need the little bars on top. Sometimes I'll use them, and sometimes I won't. But we could uh, really, if we were want to be very careful, actually write mod 17, mod 17, mod 17, all the way through at every step in the calculation. I, I don't find that's usually very helpful. And of course, the, as again, the, the, the notation I introduced at first would have said something like 16 times 29 minus 7 times 5 mod uh, 17, but it also would have said that that was equal to, it's a triple equal sign, da 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 da. So, um, so the, the, again, the, the notation that's standard, you'll find in a lot of textbooks and literature, is that to use triple equal sign and then write mod at every single step. I just use ordinary arithmetic operations as if, uh, as if these were usual numbers, but writing mod 17 at the top so I know that I'm allowed to cross out 17s at each step. So I pointed out that the, one of the major issues here for us is going to be division. Um, we don't have a, a, a nice way to divide uh, numbers. So, so that's a problem. Um, 
So we'll look at the problem of constructing reciprocals um, because really division consists of what? If I wanted to divide numbers by one another, that would be the same as multiplying b by 1 over c. And we already know what, how to do multiplying for modular arithmetic. What we don't know is what this is. So as soon as we know what reciprocals are, we'll know what b over c means. We'll know how to do uh, division. So it's good enough just to figure out what are, what are reciprocals, and then we'll be fine. All right, so what, are, what should reciprocals be? Well, let's take a look at a simple example. Um, let's see if we can come up with a very simple example. We'll again work mod 7. So working mod 7, um, we can look at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. See if we can work out reciprocals. Well, 1 times 1 is 1. 2 times 4 is 8, which is 1. Again, we're doing our very sloppy notation where I get to take out all the 7s at each step. So I had an 8, and it became a 1 because I took out a 7 from it. And I'm not even writing that. Uh, so you'll just have to f follow that. Uh, the, 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 the disappearing 7s, when I write mod 7 at the top, there'll be 7s disappearing throughout, calculations all the way through. 3 times 5 is 15, and 15 is uh, 2 7s plus 1, so that's 1. 4 times 2 is 8, which is 1. 5 times 3 is 15, which we've already said is 1. And then 6 times 6 is 36, which is 5 7s plus 1. Cross out the 7s is 1. So what have I found? I've found that I can write 1 times 1 is 1, 2 times 4 is 1, 3 times 5 is 1, 4 times 2 is 1, 5 times 3 is 1, 6 times 6 is 1. At each stage, I found some, for each of these numbers, something I could multiply by it to give 1. Now, of course, you wouldn't maybe have guessed why I chose 4 to pair up with the 2. But you could try it, try a bunch of possibilities and see what you come up with, and this is what you'll end up with. These are the only possible choices we could make to make reciprocals. So if 6 is going to have reciprocal, it's going to have to be 6, because 6 times 6 is 1 when you throw out the 7s. So we'll write this in, um, in this fancy notation. We'll write this as 1 to the minus 1 is 1, mod 7s. Mod 7, 1 to the minus 1 is 1, 2 to the minus 1 is 4, 3 to the minus 1 is 5, 4 to the minus 1 is 2, 5 to the minus 1 is 3, and 6 to the minus 1 is 6. You might ask, why don't I just write as 1 over 2 is 4? You could. Uh, 1 over 2 is 4, um, mod 7s. It's a, it looks a little bit strange, because it looks like we're talking about the fraction 1 half. That's not the normal fraction 1 half that we're used to with ordinary numbers. When we worked with ordinary real numbers, we had a, a quantity called 1 half, which was somewhere in, in the middle between 0 and 1. But for us, uh, when we work mod 7s, the right object to use as a reciprocal is 4. 2 has a reciprocal, which is 4. And that's why this notation is usually written as 2 to the minus 1 power rather than 1 over. But it, it would be fine to do that. That's perfectly fine. It's just that it might be a little confusing, and so some people find it less confusing to write it as 2 to the minus 1. But it's 2 to the minus 1 mod 7s. When we're working mod 7s, the right notion of a reciprocal is this one that the reciprocal of 2 should be 4 because 2 times 4 is 8, which is 1. And that way, these reciprocals are all remainders. We've taken remainders mod 7, all of the non-zero remainders, and we found that they all have these reciprocals, and these reciprocals are the remainders that multiply by them to give you 1. So you can see why we'd call them reciprocals. It's a bit strange, though. Again, our notion of 1 half when we work mod 7s shouldn't be uh, a number in between 0 and 1 it should be a, 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 a possible remainder. It has, we're looking with remainders mod 7, uh, the numbers 0 to 6. We're only allowed to work with those remainders, and so if we're looking for reciprocals, we look for them among those remainders, not among the real numbers. So that's the confusing bit. But you can see that it all works out. If you look at these calculations here, you can see that these things are, in fact, these and these are reciprocals of one another. Okay, so the danger out, though, is that sometimes we don't have reciprocals, so if we look at, as an example, if you ch try all the possibilities, you look for a, a 2 inverse mod 6, uh, and you don't find one. Um, uh, I'll leave you to check. Try all the possible remainders and see if they multiply by 2 to give you 1, and they don't. So it doesn't work. So not everything has a reciprocal. Um, not everything, every remainder, has a reciprocal remainder. 
If it does have, it's called a unit. A unit is a sorry, a unit is a remainder which has a reciprocal remainder. These are all units because they all have reciprocals. Some things are not units. Two is not a unit on mod six because it doesn't have a reciprocal. How do we find reciprocals when they exist? How do we decide whether or not they exist? Um, it turns out we already know this. We've already more or less done this, which is simply that um, the following uh, surprising fact, um, this theorem, um, is that so if m is greater than 0 as an integer, and that's what we're going to work modulo, like we've been working mod 7s, for example. And if r bar is a remainder modulo m, one of the remainders, and here we're using our sloppy notation with the bars, um, then what we do is we take Bezu coefficients of what? Of r and m. So we write somehow that sr plus tm is their gcd, um, is d, let's say, is the gcd of the numbers r and m. And these are usual integers, not all this stuff is just usual integers. They're not remainders. These are not remainders. So we've been working with remainders and their arithmetic, but usual integers, of course, have their own arithmetic, and we're working here with, with integer numbers. That's why I've written r bar here to minus it's a remainder, and then I lift the bar off and write r here as an integer with that remainder. So we compute, compute out the bazoo coefficients, and we find the following simple result. If the GCD is 1, then um, just modding out the Ds, you simply get S bar, R bar is 1. So R bar inverse is S bar. So that's how you calculate out the, um, the uh, reciprocal. It's just the corresponding Bezu coefficient. On the other hand, if uh, D is not 1, uh, R bar doesn't exist. Oh, sorry, R bar inverse doesn't exist because R bar is not a unit. Uh, so it's a very simple result, and it's fairly easy to prove. Let's see how the proof goes. Okay, so um, so for our proof, uh, we'll go in the one direction that um, uh, that we take our our Bezu coefficients, and as I already pointed out, um, if D is one we get sr plus tm is 1, and then we mod out by the m's, and then we get s bar r bar is 1 bar remainder, and that proves that, that this is the reciprocal that we looked for. On the other hand, if a reciprocal exists, if r bar inverse exists, then call it, call it s bar, and you get s bar r bar is 1 bar, um, so taking off the bars, in other words, going back to ordinary integers from, these are just remainders with the bars on them, nice sloppy notation, and then if we take off the bars, we get sr equals 1 up to uh, m's, multiples of m. In other words, sr plus some multiple of m is 1, and then those have to be bezu coefficients, because that's the equation that gives us bezu coefficients. Um, and so uh, so we can find, therefore, that the GC, this must be the GCD, because when you have the small, smallest thing you can write in this way um, is the GCD, but if you can write 1 in this way, then GCD would have to divide 1, so it have to be 1. So that completes the proof. It's very simple. Um, and uh, now we know how to find, by an explicit algorithm, how to find reciprocals. Um, let's do an example. So let's do... An example where we'll find um, uh, mod, mod 163, what is 14 inverse or 14 reciprocal? How do we calculate it out? According to our recipe, what we need to do is define bazoo coefficients of, of 163 and 14. So let's write it like this. It doesn't matter whether we do the 14 or the 163, which, which of them is which, as long as they both appear in that column. Um, now I can fit, again, you have to figure out the arithmetic, right? How many 14s fit in here? Um, 11 of them, so I'm going to subtract 11 row 1 from row 2. And that gives me the same row 1, but the row 2 is now minus 11, 1. And it turns out there's 9 remainder. And now I can fit a 9 into the 14, so minus 1 of that row to that row 
giving me um, this is 12 minus 1 5 and then the second row hasn't changed and then I can fit 1 5 into the 9 so minus 1 of those so um, I get the same first row and then the second row is now minus 23 2 4 I'll leave you to check the arithmetic out. If I take minus this to this, minus this to this, minus this to this, I should get these numbers here. And now we can fit a 4 into the 5, minus 1 row, uh, this row to that row. So I'll take, that will take away a 4 from the 5, um, giving me 35, because minus 1 of the 23 to the 12, so that's 23 added to 12 is 35, minus 2 added to minus 1 is minus 3. And then minus 4 to minus add to 5 is 1. Then I have the same uh, row down here. And then you can certainly fit minus 4 of these in here. And I won't worry about what that is because that certainly is, you fit neatly all the, well, you get rid of all the 4 when you take minus 4 once out of it. So that becomes a 0. I'm not going to worry about what those become. And I'll just leave the first row as it is. Um, so first row is unchanged. So that gives us our bazoo coefficients. Um, so we, we we work out from the theory of bazoo coefficients that 35 times this guy, 14, minus 3 times the 163 equals 1. And um, now I can uh, mod out the 163s because I want to work modulo 163. We're trying to work modulo 163. Um, uh, by the way, these, these are not modulo 163s. These are usual integers. They're not remainders. We're not modding out by the 163s in the steps of these calculations. They're just ordinary integer calculations like we did before. So nothing exciting and new. Um, so we get that um, uh, uh, the bezu coefficients, 35 minus 3, 35 here, minus 3 here. The number's 14, 163 here. We cut out the 163s and now work with remainders, and we get 35 remainder, 14 remainder equals one remainder. And so we get that uh, 35 is the reciprocal of 14 uh, as remainders. Um, sorry, 35 is the reciprocal of 14 as remainders. Okay, so um, so that gives us um, a calculation of how to do, how to find 14's reciprocal modulo 163. Sorry, 163. Um, so that gives us a simple example of how to calculate out um, uh, modular arithmetic uh, reciprocals, which is much, much more complicated than adding, subtracting, or multiplying, where you just added and subtracted, multiplied remainders, and then took remainder. Here you have to actually do a whole bazoo coefficient calculation just to get one arithmetic step in the modular arithmetic. So far we've looked at, um, at modular arithmetic uh, over a single number, and that made it possible to do this very sloppy notation, or uh, somewhat sloppy notation where we don't write mod, 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 mod all the way through mod 7, mod 7, mod 7, mod 7. We just had to do it uh, once and then we could calculate in a sloppy notation. But as I said, there's a danger of that if you happen to be working with different numbers that you work modulo. In our next uh, lecture, we'll look at the problem of working modulo different remainders. If we have several different remainders, we could work, uh, work out our calculations modulo them at the same time. And that turns out to be a very useful thing to do. Then, of course, we can't use this sloppy notation to be more careful. And we'll come up with a major result known as the Chinese remainder theorem, which enables us to understand how to relate working modulo some number like 6 and then working modulo its factors 2 and 3, for example.